Story time with Stephanie Story. Hi, I am art historical novelist Stephanie Story. Uh, welcome to my show Story Time, where I talk to other storytellers about uh, why they write stories and why stories are important and all of those kinds of things. My guest today, I'm very excited about because I love music and I love songwriting, but it terrifies me. Uh, so my, my guest today is a New York-based recording artist, uh, professor, and writer of both the songs and now the books. Uh, his latest just out this month, Music, Lyrics, and Life, a field guide for the advancing screenwriter. Welcome to the show, Mike Errico. Hello. How are you? Great. You I am, I am thrilled to be having this conversation for so many reasons. Yes. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to start with a guy by the name of Paul Giamatti, who I happen to love, actor, sure. brilliant. We all love sure. him. Sure, uh, Said about your book that it's a manual for better living through creativity and vice versa. So a manual for living for creativity through life, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what you intended? Is it really a songwriting book or is it a life book or is it both? <laughs> Well, it starts as a, its heart is as a songwriting book, but being a professor, I don't see a lot of my students ending up as songwriters. Um, and I still want to be able to serve them in some way. So I, I look for things that are, uh, that cohere with, with whatever else they're going to be doing in life. You know, like, I think one of the analogies I said was, um, uh, if you're a uh, high school physics professor, you can't really like judge how good you are based on how many amazing physicists come out of here, you know, um, out of your class. So what, what I hope is that the, the skills that I can give them via songwriting is that they are actually transferable to other types of, of living, right? So it is really uh, broader than, than, than songwriting. Um, Although what you find is, I th and I'm sure you know this, um, if you do anything deeply enough, everything kind of connects, right? So, so I spoke, true. yeah. So I spoke to a bunch of people in other disciplines um, to sort of pull that sort of idea out. You know, I, I didn't want to be like, here's this songwriter and this songwriter and this songwriter. So, you know, I spoke to a tire manufacturer and a fly fisherman and an astronomer and George Saunders, the, uh, the, the novelist, or the, the writer um, who's written a, a novel, uh, um, you know, along with, you know, the lead singer of Kiss and, and songwriters and stuff. But I wanted to get it as broad as possible. Why, why did you talk to tire people? What were you learning from them? <laughs> well, in story, when you're talking about story, um, story, uh, a lot of story has form, right? Um, and a lot of students and a lot of people who write think that they're going to innovate and change the world by attacking the form that we know so well, you know, um, my uh, sort of my, my theory for them, my advice for them is not to attack the form, but to um, give us voice within the form. And the, the analogy is that, you know, there's no need to reinvent the wheel because the wheel really works really, really well. Um, and to prove that, I, I went to Goodyear and I, I asked a tire manufacturer, I was like, listen, you guys literally make wheels. It's 2021 common era. You know, why haven't you figured it out? Is it the shape that's the problem? And of course, you know, I needed them to say, like, you're an idiot, you know, basically, the, the wheel works great. And no, triangles are not on the horizon, you know, because the wheel works. And yet, we are constantly innovating on the wheel, literally, so that reinventing of it is occurring, but not, not from the geom from the geometry part of it. You know, so I want, so by doing that, I wanted to substantiate that song form and storytelling form um, is a skeleton, is a framework that we can tell infinite numbers of stories uh, through. And 
and what they what I really want them to innovate on is like getting to your voice because the voice is the thing that no one else has. But that's the you impossible know. part to get to, isn't it? I mean, that's like the really difficult part. Maybe I should yeah. be possible. It's the really hard part to get to. It's well, yeah. voice and story. So how do you help somebody else do that? Because they're about <laughs> well, well, I, I have to say, this is the chapter we're talking about is early in the book. And it's the uh, the beginning of the book for me is like, let's clear some things out of the way. Okay. Let's say, let's say form is good form works. Okay. So let's not get all bent out of shape about like, I'm going to reinvent the wheel. Basically I'm going to, I don't know. I mean, there's so many, there's so many ways you can, you can bend the thing, but so let's, let's leave the form alone and let's also do other things like, um, let's come to a conclusion on God on uh are we going to consider uh a a a great creator as part of our inspiration or are we someone who does not believe in that kind of thing at all and can we remain uh creative regardless which way you go, because so many of the creativity, like the artist's way by Julia Cameron, so many of them talk about like, you need to talk to this great creator and you need to get in touch with the artist child and you are wounded. And now we have to like unwound you and all this kind of thing. A lot of my students just don't buy that, you know? And a lot of my students are like, you know, this is all very, very uh, Western borrowing Eastern philosophies and, and we all hate it. Um, so instead of, you know, watching, watching and having a mutiny occur in my class, I, I, I open up the concept to, um, okay, maybe you like God, maybe you don't, how do we get to work <laughs> regardless? You don't have to announce it or anything. I just, I just want you guys to, um, get in touch with where is the source of this inspiration and this voice, right? So there's that I sort of talk about. And then, I mean, and I go into other parts of it um, of just like, let's set this up. What is a song? What is a hit? What's a good story? Um, what are we doing with our listeners' time, right? I mean, that to me is the biggest thing across all types of story, right? It's like, we are asking people for time. And that is a huge ask. We don't have a lot, you know? So from there, we go directly into things like revision, editing, silence, the addition of silence into all things so that we get to a point that's more um, so we say only what needs to be said. It's so interesting when you're talking about, um, you're asking for people's time. I think the way that I always phrase that is, um, the world doesn't, in my life, in my world, it's books, right? In your world, it's songs. Right. The world doesn't need another book until it does. Yes. So make sure that the world needs the book that you're putting out into the world. Yes. It's the same thing with a song, right? Make sure that the world actually needs what you're putting out there, that that's what makes the whole journey worth it, right? Yes, absolutely. And, and you know, of course, from the bureaucratic side of teaching, they're always like, you need to engage your students and all this kind of stuff. I don't believe that at all. Like, if they don't want to show up, leave. Like, we don't need you. Nobody needs it you know, and you don't need to be here if you don't want to be here. And in fact, you shouldn't be here if you don't want to be here. So don't show up. So I'm not going to give pop quizzes at the beginning of a class so that I make sure that everybody is there and on time and having done the reading. If you haven't done the reading, you lose. That's, that's all. Um, 
okay, so if this is your philosophy, which I love, I, you, you, you are winning me over just in like the first <laughs> few minutes of talking to you. You are fantastic. Okay, but if, so why, uh, so you teach this stuff, you teach this stuff to students and, and people need to show up. And I guess that partially answers the question of why turn this into a book now, right? Because yeah. then people can go out and actively choose to read your book and actively choose to engage. But, but I just put words in your mouth. So instead of doing that, why, why did you decide now was the moment that the world needed your book? Speaking of, of things the world needs. Well, um, uh, the, what happened with this book is that I knew that I wanted to write prose. That was the first thing I, I, I knew, but I didn't know what I wanted to write. And this now we're going way back to before even songwriting. I was like, I want to write a book sometime in my life, right? So I wrote one, this is years ago, and it sucked, right? And then I wrote another one and it sucked. And then I wrote another one and it I abandoned it because it was sucking, right? But then I was like, then I got into teaching and my experience changed and my experience became relevant to other people besides myself. Right. Like I was trying to be like, Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's a mem Maybe it was a memoir, but like, unless I'm, I don't know, unless I, I'm, I don't know who I, I, I don't want to say anybody and, and throw them under the bus, but like, um, it was memoir ish. So then I started teaching and I wrote this other book. We're now like four books in, if you're keeping track. Um, and this was half about things I taught my students. And then the other half was the horrible thing that happened to me that caused me to learn the thing to teach the students, right? So it'd be like, I'm in class and whatever. Believe me, don't do X. And then of course the next chapter is like, is me, in Indiana on a frostbitten night doing the stupidest thing possible, right? So that, that's how I learned the lesson. So I took that to, I got a break. And the break was a person in the industry, right? And I didn't even actually know who it was. A friend of a friend gave it to a person in the industry. Could have been Stephen King for all I know. I have no idea, right? And this person granted me an audience and they read my book and then they get, came back with a typewritten thing that came like basically like you know hand over hand written and whatever in code um that's told me the book half sucks <laughs> but half was really good and i was like oh my god what a huge victory right and i'm like well which half tell me let me guess it's not the one that has anything to do with me and they were like, correct, <laughs> you are not interested. <laughs> but teaching people what you know is interesting and valuable to them, right? The book I was making was valuable to me, maybe as therapy, but the book that I ended up, this book is actually trying to be generous and helpful to others. And that's how, and then how? got a book deal uh, and, and, and things clicked in a way that um, rarely happens with all of the crazy things I try to do. And you know? from what I've seen from the reviews, it works precisely because you are being giving and people are learning and people are growing in themselves. I mean, that's the key to putting out any story, right? Absolutely, absolutely. The generosity. Somebody else, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's something I didn't understand because I really like writing and I really like reading. And so like, I want to play too, right? So then I tried to play. And the thing was, I had no game. Uh, and so it was, it was really bad. And so I had to have an experience that was worth telling others about. And I do think that teaching is that. I do have to go back to the beginning though, because in your <clears throat> intro, you say that, just like songwriting, you started with a question, right? Mm -hmm. And then you followed that question and just went yes. right. Okay, what was the question? Um, well, the, the questions, 
I, I think what I meant by that is that I get into office hours with students mm -hmm. and they never ask me songwriting questions ever. We never talk about songwriting. It's all about like, I'm afraid or my parents suck. And how do I, how do I express myself and not be, you know, not be ostracized in whatever way, you know, how do I do this? How do I do anything? How do I expose myself? You know, and those kind of questions that are being asked of me of, you know, 19 through 23 year old students um, are all questions I've had myself and still have. I mean, I don't tell them that the question never goes away. I always, I always give them an answer, but they'll find out themselves that I'm full of, full of it. But, um, but, you know, I took their questions and I just hung on for the ride. So for instance, um, I was talking to a student about a line in a song. And I was like, you know, what would be really great would be as if you repeat that line exactly the same as you just did it. And she was like, why? That's so stupid. I just did it. Why would I do it again? And I was like, that is a really heavy question. And I'm like, so then I started getting into repetition, right? What is repetition all about? And repetition is a huge topic, right? Kierkegaard wrote something about repetition, which meant I had to read Kierkegaard, which meant, oh my God, who's Kierkegaard? How do you spell it? I, I, you know, because I, I didn't go to school for this kind of thing, but, um, but I went and I found uh, lots of work about repetition. I happened to like astronomy and I happened to meet an astronomer named Jan Levin, who is an author of a book called Black Hole Blues, which, um, which is about black holes colliding in space and finding the sound of, of, of black holes, the energy that black holes actually give off when they collide. And I was like, wait a minute, my favorite movie is Contact and it's about contact with alien life. And what we look for is repetition from the universe, right? That would be the only way we would understand and be able to determine that whatever signals we get are not a fluke, right? Repetition means pattern, means consciousness, right? So I start, so I, call, I called her up and she's like, okay, let's talk about uh, extraterrestrials and why we look for repeating patterns and what is it about us that makes repeating patterns interesting. And she's like, well, that's, I believe that it's because um, our forefathers are the laws of physics. And we are, uh, we are patterns. Uh, everything we do inside us works clockwork. Um, and we see ourselves in repetition, which is why we like it, is why we look for it in the uh in in our exterior environments in it's, our stories and and in our stories and in our songs and in uh the uh, world of extraterrestrials and why people went crazy when they found something called pulsars which give out a pretty regular pattern and they were like oh my god we finally found little green men um and it was a very exciting sort of moment that turned out to just be a natural phenomenon, but, um, but people went bonkers and it was the repetition that made them go crazy. So anyway, <laughs> to answer your question, when I have a, when, when a student asks me a question, I'm like, well, let's, let's find out. So now when people ask me like, why would you repeat a chorus three times in a row? Um, it's because math made us. That's why. Um, math. <laughs> right. We are math. I mean, 
so which which to me was like such a crazy it was such a strange sort of revelation and it answers the question for the student you know so it's like okay so i'm not just doing this for no freaking reason I'm not just doing this because Paul McCartney did it. I'm doing it because the brain likes repetition. The brain absorbs it. And when the brain can anticipate something and then that something happens, we actually get dopamine reactions. We get excitement from that, you know? So that to me was, was really exciting. So then I got into that. I got into the brain. How does the brain work? I'm not a neurologist, Stephanie. Well, I don't know what I'm- You talk to people. You talk to people who know more than you do. That's the smart way to do it, man. I know. I know. So so then I just did I was, But I, I, I just kind of did it, you know? And then like, um, and so I was able to find out what, um, what does the brain actually like in a story, you know? So- okay. Uh, okay, what was the so you followed all these rabbit holes? Yes. What was the biggest thing you learned? What was the thing that changed your writing the most during the process of this? Um, it's funny because it, it, you're absolutely right. Rabbit holes. That's exactly what it is. Um, well, the one thing that dogs me a lot. It's maybe not the biggest revelation, but it's the one that resonates the most with me. Was the conversation I had with George Saunders, the, the, the writer who, I mean, is, is just an absolute, like, you know, he's just, he's like one of the biggest writers like ever. The, the fact that I got him on the phone, forget it. Anyway. So what George Saunders did, George Saunders wanted to be a singer songwriter, which is something I didn't know. And like, we talked and he was like, well, you know, I'm a really fast guitar player. You know that. And you know, it was, it was hilarious. Like he's into guitar. I mean, he's into songwriting and he's into that. And he's like, I just couldn't really do it. I was like, you're one of the greatest storytellers of all time. How could you not do a story song? He's like, there's something about the relationship between sections th that has to be pat, but not totally. They have to be there has to be an interesting jump. And I just couldn't make that leap. I just couldn't do it. Um, and I found my way in story writing. I was able to do that better. And, and it was like, he, he said, the thing that changed him was the maturity. There's a moment of maturity, he said, where you understand the thing you can do most beautifully. And, and I said, to what degree do we have the, op, op, the option in deciding that? And he's like, we have none, right? And it was like, it was a really heavy moment for me. Um, and I think hopefully for readers, it, it will be as well. It'll land in the same way, you know, and he's very funny. So he was like, look, if you're writing string quartets and everyone falls asleep during your string quartets, and then you cry in the corner and to console yourself, you pick up an accordion and you start playing polkas and everyone goes crazy and dances. Well, now, you know, now, you know, not necessarily what you want to be a shining light in, but you didn't have that opportunity. You didn't have that option. Okay, so George Saunders can't write music, afraid of it. I'm terrified of this. Like, I haven't written a song since I was like 16 because I'm just afraid of it, right? And then all of these students are asking these really deep questions about self-doubt and creativity yes. and, yeah. and what am I going to do and how do I have a voice and all this pain from my child and how do I do, how do I navigate all that? Is there something particular about songwriting that creates this fear in people of like exposing themselves is there something particular to the nature of storytelling through song that does that or is it just storytelling in general what do you think um i don't know because i have to say like i'm putting this book out and i'm having like a coronary like I, i'm like freaking out uh, about it what if they don't like it like now if there are so many things that could possibly happen to me uh bad things if like, if this totally is a disaster in some, in some way or whatever, 
I, I think in general for the students at my age, I'm sorry, the, the students their age, um, they are concerned with looking cool. There's so much of that. Um, and there's so much of, um, there's so much fashion tied into songwriting and so much defining of cool uh, and what a hit is and what cool people do and what cool people say and are and all of that um, that's tied in to, um, to songwriting. Um, and especially if you're a performing songwriter, then there's the body, there's visual, there's your hair, there's your look, there's your age, there's a lot of that um, that's, that's tied in. And that's, I mean, that's in a lot of different art, art forms. So I don't think it's different necessarily, but those are specific things that, um, that are obstacles for, for songwriters. Um, so they do, they get scared, they get, they get nervous. Um, and like, I mean, the question, students will play a draft of a song and they'll just be obsessed with like, is that cheesy? Is that cringe? Are you cringing? It's like, am I saying the core thing that we all feel in a way that's not, you know, well, too obvious? Yeah. Um, and they're really nervous about that, you know? Uh, um, I mean, our writers, I'm sure, I'm sure they are as well, you know? Um, uh, yeah. I mean, it's all, it's all, it's, it, it is really all the same. It's all self-doubt, you know, but, oh, we, what a but we live out loud. We live out loud as songwriters, right? So you have to do it on stage. To me, I think sometimes songwriters have it better because you'll write a song and you play it on stage. And if people start throwing things at you, you just revise. <laughs> right, that's you know? true. And once you publish a book, that's not a thing. No, no, you don't get to revise. You know, no. I think it was Kanye. Kanye put a, an album out on streaming services, got some reactions and pulled it and, re, and reworked it. I, and hilarious. I mean, you can't really do that with a book. No, I mean, um, but it, it, there was, I also feel like there was a day when you couldn't really do that with songs either. Now, at least there's true. access where you could put it out there and you can get feedback and then pull it and then put it back out. So I also right. think that's changed a little bit. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost out. Of, I'm out of time, which is crazy because you are fascinating. I could talk to you for three hours. But I have to ask, since you've done both, you've done songwriting and now you've written a book about songwriting and now you are putting a book out. You've already talked a little bit about the book process, but what has been the biggest difference for you, either in the writing process or in the putting it out into the world or both? What's, what's the biggest difference for you between songwriting and book? Because they, they are very different, not just in size. They are very different. Yes, there's the connection, the, the connection I make between the two actually has to do with size, actually, that you just said. Um, if a book is, you know, a pop song is probably like two minutes, 40 seconds, two minutes, 50 seconds or something like that. If you take the colon out of the timing, that to me is a good page length. Right. So a 250 page book, pretty good. That's a good pop book. You know, a four minute pop song is a problem. A 400 page book, it's got to be great. You know, like for, for me. And like, so I was definitely, I, I put that sort of comparison together. Um, they're very different. Um, I think uh, the, the solitude of writing a book is very different. Um, there's no way to audition chapters for people. Um, my poor suffering wife has read so many versions of every chapter and she was it. She was my first, she was my first read every time. Um, and it's not like, here, check out this song. In two minutes, it's over. It's like, here's a 40 page, you know, honk of maybe garbage, you know? And it's, there's so much more time uh, involved. I think also um, 
books have this weird sort of arcane feel. Like I really was like, do I even write a book or is it, do I put it on Substack and it's chapter by chapter and I serialize it and I put it behind a paywall and all this kind of thing. Um, and I was like, no, there's a grand tradition that I want to be a part of. I want to, for once in my life, I want to hold the thing I made, you know, that music completely invisible now without CDs. And, and by the way, CDs were never like a good feel, you know, <laughs> they, they never really felt like the work, you know, um, the book feels like the work. It's an appropriate weight, you know, um, and that's um, that I've really, I've really enjoyed. Um, but huge commonality when it's clicking and the writing is clicking and things are moving and time stops and you're just in it like the zone, like that zone thing, it's the same. It's the same. It's, it's just, it's a, it's just, it's the feeling that wipes away all of the crappy days, right? You know it, you know it well. I mean, I read your book is awesome. Raphael is amazing. Thank you. Um, you know, that was, man, that's the, the, that's what you're always looking for, right? It's that, it's that time goes away. Yep. Everything disappears and you're in it, you're in the thick of it and there's nothing else. Man, yeah. that's, that's the beauty of it. That's the oh. whole thing. And you don't know really where it's going. Yeah. Right. No, you're like, not, you're, you're, you're no longer in control at that moment, which is uh, the best. Yeah. The that's best. the greatest. And, and your, your book to bring yours back, there's a lot of dialogue. Mm -hmm. And, and I know from writing dialogue myself in all of the, the failed books that I did, um, that it's really fun. You don't know what's going to come out of their mouths. And yeah. that is hilarious to me. Yeah. Um, it's not you anymore, yeah. but, it, but, but to be fair, we all have thousands of failed novels. I mean, I think I have seven failed ones. <laughs> didn't give up I just kept beating my head up I wasn't smart like right. you and went I should go do something else I was like no I will keep doing right right and and the why of that mm -hmm. has no answer to me yeah why yeah. seven not what are you doing it's like don't ask it doesn't matter it doesn't you know it doesn't matter right um, this is what you would do. This is what you do. This is clearly what I do, whether I get paid or not, because there are seven of them tucked away that I just open that will never see the light of day because they right. are bad. <laughs> um, right. Um, same, this, same. This, Mike, this has been a fantastic conversation. Uh, you, your book is on order. It is on my way to my house. And now I'm okay. going to um, uh, plant, like, after this conversation, now I'm just going to, like, tell my husband, go away. Because I have a book to read and I'm just going to sit down and I'm be like obsessed because this is totally my kind of thing. Story time with Stephanie. Story, story time virtually. We've got time and plenty of stories. Talking stories in a novel way. Story time with Stephanie. Story.